uh, and uh, he especially he uh, got in touch with uh, daily papers and magazines and periodicals uh, and uh, moreover I mean in one of his uh, in some of his uh, writings to the Katerikos in Ishmiazin he says that they are preparing certain articles which they expect to be printed the way they are without any additions or subtractions in the French press and this is what had happened actually. Uh, and uh, he was very careful in describing France uh, as the eternal um, a protector of the weak and a magnificent dispenser of justice. Uh, and uh, he frequently uh, made talks uh, here and there uh, under the auspices usually of the France-Armenia uh, uh, committee. Uh, but you will agree with me that uh, the Asians and the Africans uh, will not join him in that kind of a description of the, uh, of the French Empire. Uh, is the eternal protector of the weak and the magnificent dispenser of justice. He was just politicking, in other words. He wanted their uh, support. Maybe he believed in it, but uh, even some contemporary uh, French historians would never accept that as a um, proper uh, description of French history, especially uh, since the 18th century. Uh, well, uh, the Armenians were also well established in Britain uh, and uh, they also had a British Armenia committee and uh, they had, uh, the Armenians had friends in both houses of the parliament, among the lords, House of Lords and the House of Commons and uh, most importantly Lord Price was their friend and uh, uh, Bogos Nubar and several of his colleagues were very instrumental uh, in the preparation uh, of, uh, of a book that aimed at the uh, Ottoman Turks uh, that was printed in 1916. You remember that book, I have a, a copy of the very first edition, which is very difficult to get now, but it's been printed over and over again. Uh, and uh, the young British historian Arnold Toynbee was its editor and he had an Armenian to translate the Armenian stuff and uh, there are no references to, it's just like a book of gossip as a matter of fact. For instance, sometimes <coughs> it said, according to what an uh, old Armenian lady told uh, uh, a missionary that who was born in neutral Switzerland, uh, such and such thing has happened. Uh, and of course, all these words are chosen very carefully. For instance, just because Switzerland happens to be legally and according to international law is a neutral country, that doesn't mean that everybody, every Swiss citizen shall be neutral. <laughs> We're very far from it. Uh, and uh, er sorry and usually a reliable person, a gentleman from such and such European country and so on. Uh, this is not, of course, the way to write history, especially when the issue is so, so complex. There is entirely uh, no reference to any Turkish source. And uh, when I was talking uh, to uh, somewhere in Europe, I'm sorry, somewhere in New York, I think in the year 2009, um, there was a young uh, Armenian lady, an American citizen, who, who, who said to me, do you know what my grandfather told me? No, do you know what my grandmother told me? But you wouldn't believe that. And I said, I, I believe them. I certainly do. You know something that might even the things that she didn't have the courage to tell you will go beyond what you told me. There may be certain things that she, she couldn't tell you, possibly. <coughs> but what you don't know is, same things happen to some Turks and other Muslims. That's the crux of the matter.
This is in psychiatry. This is a this is suffering from a complex of victimization. So sometimes the husband comes to a psychiatrist and complains about his wife, and the wife comes to a psychiatrist and complains about the husband and so on. And what the good psychiatrist will try to 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 to, to tell either one or the other is that, do you realize what you have done to the other one? And unless this is also brought into the issue, there can be no solution. And whatever has happened in the, in the past, in history, actually, really, is so much different, but especially some of the younger Armenian generation, generations now are told what has happened. There is no similarity between the two things. What actually happened, what they know that has happened. Now, the, of course, uh, I said that Bogos Nomar had some connection with Russia, and certainly uh, the Armenian connections with Russia is also time honored, not as long as uh, those with France, perhaps. But especially after the Treaty of Turkmenchai in, in 1828, um, per Persia uh, lost some territory to Russia, and uh, with it went the Azeri Turks and the territory that belonged to them as well. And uh, Yerevan, which is now the capital of Indep the independent Republic of Armenia, was once, and not so long ago, a totally Azeri Turkish city. And uh, as you might be here, informed me last night, I suppose, that in, even in 1909, the Azeri Turkish population in Yerevan was quite a lot. But not today. Not a single Azeri Turk in Yerevan. Now, the, the Cyrus Russian policy was to remove the Turks and the other Muslims from there mm -hmm. and to make it a Christian sort of a city because they would have confidence in it. It's for, for purposes of security, so to speak. Uh, and, uh, and naturally, the many Armenians gradually and in time uh, had a much better place in the Russian society. For instance, the Lazarev family um, uh, set up a research center which eventually became the Institute of Oriental Studies in Moscow. Uh, and that particular building which he had built is now the Armenian Embassy uh, in Moscow. And uh, there were some Armenian generals in the Tsarist army. Uh, Lazarev was one, Melikov, uh, Sherkovnikov, and uh, Tergukasov, and so on. And for instance, these people very were very instrumental in the Russian victories during the Russian uh, Ottoman War of 1877 and 78. Uh, this was the worst war that uh, took place. We lost so much territory uh, and so on. And, uh, and of course, uh, Armenian relations with Russia were not always very smooth uh, because they had their own uh, uh, people who were who disliked the minorities, and they did not consider uh, the Armenian Gregorian Church as a uh, typical full-fledged Christian church. And uh, also, this is one of the sicknesses of the Western world as well. Uh, I mean, it was the Ottoman Turks who first recognized the. Uh, Armenian Gregorian Church as an independent church that was in 1461, and very few people people know this. And uh, 
Nowadays, there's no reference to it at all. Uh, well, it shows some uh, uh, magnanimity uh, and uh, readiness to accept other pe the others as well into the fold uh, uh, of the nation. Uh, well, for instance, there was um, uh, a con certain Konstantin Petrovich Pobyodonosov. Uh, he's an ar he was an arch uh, enemy of especially of religious minorities. And, uh, and uh, the Tsar in his time, for instance, uh, was also his uh, student. Um, he attempted russification and uh, that pushed the militant Armenians towards uh, revolutionary activities and finally they set up in Tbilisi, which is now the capital of uh, Georgia, uh, in 1890, uh, a Dashnak political party. Well, it was not a political party in the sense that we understand what political parties are or should be. Uh, it was more like a terrorist organization. Uh, and uh, for instance, we know from the uh, doctoral dissertation uh, of the lady who taught uh, this particular topic in the University of California at Los Angeles. In Albanian? Uh, in Albanian, yes, in Albanian. And uh, she, she, uh, she writes that uh, it's very difficult to get hold uh, of the original documents because they used to memorize the articles and then swallow them and so on because uh, they, they, they even the article said that well our activities will be to shoot <laughs> the administrators and uh, assassinate such and such people and so on and so forth. Now we don't call such a gathering a political party nowadays do we? But they are supposed to be political parties now they are terrorist organizations and Dalmantian uh, was one of the first few uh, Armenians who described them as terrorists in the way they were. Well, of course, uh, the conditions uh, of the First World War changed things a little bit in favor of the Armenians and Tsar Nicholas II promised them a brilliant future uh, at the end of the First World War. Uh, he had the, he had just the opposite kind of a future uh, in 1917, but nevertheless, uh, he promised them a, a very nice future uh, and uh, congratulated them and thanked them for the, um, for the support uh, in the war against the Turks and so on. Well, he was not the only one. I mean, the Armenians uh, got praises from the British General Allenby and Lloyd George and uh, George Clemenceau and 116 members of the French Assembly of Parliament and so on and so forth. Uh, so, in other words, uh, the, the Armenians had uh, some sort of good relations among the Russians as well. So, uh, Bogos Nomar cultivated on that as well. Uh, and uh, he had, actually, he did not have uh, confidence, uh, much confidence in the Russians because he always uh, suspected that the Russians were after uh, occupying Turkish lands, especially uh, Eastern Anatolia, uh, and turning it into a Russified area. In other words, they were uh, planning to bring in uh, Russian peasants and the Cossacks uh, and then changing the whole uh, 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 composition of the society there. And of course they were uh, trying to add the Turkish Straits to the uh, Southeast Russian domains. And uh, there were enough enmity towards the non-Russians and the non-Orthodox people in Russia. And for instance, one of the governor generals of the Caucasus uh, said that in the future or in the near future, there will be no Armenians left in the Caucasus, save a few specimens for the museum. Mm. I don't think that this is a very friendly way to describe the future of the Armenians. Uh, Nubar also did not uh, neglect Italy 
and uh, Italy uh, had uh, wrested away Tripoli and Benghazi uh, from the Turks uh, in 1911, and uh, a year later they had established themselves over the island of Rhodos and the Dodecanese. There were 12 islands there. Uh, and uh, Nomar knew that there was an Armenian community near Venice, especially in the small island of St. Lazaro, uh, and uh, it's still in operation. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, the first uh, book in the Armenian language was printed in St. Lazaro. And uh, he, Nubar, because of his connection with France, Britain, uh, Russia, Italy, and so on, he felt free to discuss 